everyone today we are going to see data structures okay first what is data structures so this basically a group of data elements that are put together under one name and it defines a particular way of storing and organizing data in a computer so that it can be used efficiently okay right so it looks bigger no it's very simple right so group of data elements right so in the C program you see array right so array is a group of elements right so here yeah, we, we, here also we are going to put a group of data elements okay so consists of fully data okay right and how are we going to store and organize in a computer say for example uh, we have a stack right we use a stack in our emails in your messages right which means we are storing the messages in our application say for example uh, in your android right so message uh, message will be stored at first okay what a new message comes in right it is stored at first okay right so data structures are used in every program software system okay so the data structures are used in Okay, so first it is used in the operating system, then static analysis, Graphics, then compiler design. Right, so these are the way that we can, uh, these are the applications that we use uh, data sector. Right, so if you learn uh, DBMS, right, you, uh, so you will understand that the major data structure, right, the major data structure under the network data model is graph. Okay and the hierarchical data model is trees so rdbms is right it's a array right so a data structure is an essential ingredients of many efficient algorithm okay as it enables a programmer to manage a huge amount of data easily and efficiently right so some uh, formal design methods okay and programming language okay emphasize the data structure and the algorithm as a key organizing factor in software design the primary goal of a program or a software is not to perform the calculation or operation but to store and retrieve information as quick as possible right okay so for example uh, application of an appropriate data structure provides an efficient solution right for any problem that we have so a solution is said to be efficient if it solves a problem within the resource constraint like the total space available to store data and the time allowed to perform any subtask and the best solution is one of that requires a fewer resources than the known alternative however 
The cost of this solution is the amount of resources it consumes. Right? And the cost basically measured in terms of one key resource such as time. Okay. So which is implied assumptions that assumes that this it means the other resource constraint. Okay. So programmers do not write a program just to solve a problem but to write an efficient program. So for this they first analyze the problem to determine the performance that must be achieved and then the most appropriate data structure for that job. Okay. So will be considered. Right. So the program designer with a poor understanding of data structure concept ignores this analysis and apply a data structure with which they can work comfortably. So the applied data structure not be appropriate for the problem at hand and therefore it may result in poor performance right uh, which means uh, it, uh, it gives you a slow operation right so when you select a data structure to solve a problem you have to uh, follow the steps okay number one So what is selecting a database? So there is a chain. Okay. So I'm selecting a data structure to solve any problem. So, it is, you need to select any of the steps. So, analysis of the problem to determine the basic operation that must be supported right? supported for example right? so when you include or exclude I mean, so if, uh, you can say when you insert, write, or delete, or search, okay, the data item, the data structure, okay, data item from the data structure. Next, to quantify the resource constraint of each program. And select the data structure. The best meets the uh, easy requirement okay so whichever it is the best to suit for your so, uh, solution you have to use okay so this approach is to set appropriate data, data structure for the problem at the hand okay so uh, in this approach the first concern is the data and the operation that are to be performed upon the data so the second concern is the representation of the data and the final concern is the implementation of the representation okay so there are different types of data structure that a C program supports while one type of data structure may permit adding of a new data item only at the beginning and other may allow it to be added at any position okay while one data structure may allow accessing a data item sequentially 
other may allow the random access of the data. So, which means I have not, right now I have two different uh, data structure. One is what? One which allows the uh, sequential accessing of the data, data item. Other one is the random access of the data item. So, the selection of an appropriate data structure, so okay, for the particular problem, is a very important for us to decide and it plays a major role and it gives you a major impact on the performance of the program right now let's see what are the uh, data structure um, uh, organization okay the data structure organization first the data means what first data is the value A set of value okay set of values right so uh, what it says it specifies uh, either the value of a variable or a constant say for example the employee number address of the employee salary of the employee when the data item right uh, that does not have a subordinate data item is categorized as elementary item okay the data item that does not have a subordinate data item is categorized as elementary data item so the one that composed of one or more subordinate data items is called a group item okay so for example employee name may be divided into what into three right one is first name middle name and last name but but his employee id would normally be treated as single item okay so this is what we call it as a data okay set of values and I say okay some will have some will have subordinate I mean some will have a data item I mean neighbor okay uh, some will have a neighbor related item which is called group item and other will have no neighbor data item right so which is called elementary data item right next we have to talk about the record okay what is record is a collection of right is a collection of data items right so for example employee id employee name right department address contact number right so the entire thing right the entire thing is called what record okay then what is called file For example, if I have a data of 30 employees, okay, right? So 30 employees in a department, okay. Then there are 30 records in the file, okay. So all these little records are stored in the file, okay. So example. These are the uh, elementary that uh, the basic data that we have to see. Next is what we have to see the classification of data structure.
right? So the derivatives are generally classified into primitive and non-primitive derivative. Okay. Primitive. data structure okay. okay now we'll see what is primitive data structure. so let me just write it as data structure So what is primitive data structure? Right, these are the fundamental data types which supported by any programming language. Right, say for example, integer, float, character, boolean. Right, so these are the basic data types. Okay. Right. So these are the data structures, right? The basic data structures like um, integer, real value, I mean the float, okay? The float, can, and boolean, right? So what is called a non primitive data structure, right? So uh, these data structures are created using primitive data structure. Say for example, uh, array, linked list, trees and graphs, right? So array, linked list, trees and graph means what? If I say array, it will be a full of integer array. It will be a full of float array. It will be full of character array. Okay, so those are called non primitive array. Okay. Just create it.
right so example <coughs> Okay, another one is what non-linear data structures, right? Is further separated into okay. So it is further subdivided into number one linear, number two non-linear. Okay, so uh, what is linear and what is non-linear? Right, if the elements of the data structures are stored in a sequential order, then it is called linear data structure. Okay, so the elements stored in sequential order. Okay, next is what non-linear data structure. Right, so. Uh, here the ways right the data structures that is stored okay will be different than the linear data structure okay right so here are the elements that will not be stored in the sequential order say for example trees okay and graph so you will not see any sequential order there okay so say for example um, elements not Stored in the sequential order. Okay, so these are what example trees and graphs. What about this one example? Um, arrays. Okay, stack and the key. So these are the non-linear, this is linear and non-linear data structure. Okay. So if you see uh, if you see the C program, right? So the C program uh, supports right many of the data structure. So you know it supports an array and you, you know it supports a linker list. Okay. So now let's let's discuss about the arrays okay so what is array so array is a array and link is a linear data structure okay so how are we going to store the data in the linear data structure okay okay so in the first one is what array. okay so array is a group of similar data elements right okay so these same these elements are same array these elements are same array Okay, which stores in the consecutive array. Okay, and R referenced by the index. Means what access to by the index. So index starts with zero. Okay, right? Suppose if I declare, so this is what the syntax is a type name of the array and then size. Okay, so in marks. 
Suppose I want to store five subject marks. Okay. So there I need this one. So the above statement allocates the marks. Subjects. Okay. As mentioned below. Okay. Then we have first element. So fifth element. So the first element will be the marks of zero. The second element will be the marks of one. The third element will be the marks of two. The fourth element will be the marks of three. And the third element will be the marks of four. So it starts with zero to four. Okay, so arrays are uh, used generally when we arrays are used. Okay, when we want to store a large number of similar data type of elements. With the following limitations. What is the order limitation is first array size is fixed. Okay, so once you declared you cannot change it. Okay. Right? So and uh, stores in stores the elements in Continuous rotation. Okay, so which may not available, right? Which is not available all the time. Next is insertion and deletion of elements. Yes. Why you mean suppose I want to insert one element in the third place? Okay, how it is possible? You have to shift all the elements and then you have to place it. Okay, so that is what is difficult. Okay, so this limitation should be solved by the linked list. That we have that, that's why we have to choose a proper data structure. Let's see what is called a linked list. Okay. So now we are going to see how the link list is going to work. Okay. So we see a link list, right? It's very flexible. It's very flexible and dynamic. Here. So in which the elements in which the elements are called nodes and each nodes are linked together. Okay, link to the next node. Link to the next node. Okay, right? So here, uh, in 
this link list, the programmer need not worry about need not worry about right worry about how many right how many elements 